Say sokcha. 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 Sok means what? Lifecha. What's dorje chupa? Diamond cutter, okay? Cha means to cut, sok means life. Sokcha means killing, okay? Obviously, in Buddhism, it refers to killing any person, which in Buddhism covers all life. Okay? Dogs are persons too, insects are persons too, according to Buddhism. Okay? There are people in the sense of being personalities, individuals, and you can't kill them. Okay? They're just the same as us in being people, persons. Okay? Bugs are persons, dogs are persons, cats are persons, cows are persons. Birds are persons, okay, and you can't kill them. Uh, that's the first thing to say about it. And then I'm just going to give a few uh, additional details that, that are not the same as in the West. Um, abortion is considered killing, okay. Uh, it's believed that the consciousness enters the, the, when the sperm and the egg meet each other at the moment of conception, consciousness enters that single celled organism or two cells or whatever you call it. So to, at, after that, to terminate that life process would be killing, okay? according to Buddhism. I'm going to say a lot of things tonight according to Buddhism. Okay? It's not me, it's Jetson Kappa, and he's quoting Atisha and the ancient Indian writers and the Buddha. So it's not anything that I made up. A lot of what I'm going to say is not too popular in the West, uh, but it's my duty as a teacher to tell you. So everything I say tonight is coming from a sutra, a Buddhist sutra, spoken by the Buddha. Um, suicide is also killing. Suicide qualifies in murder. It's killing a person. There's a great, great uh, hunger in the United States uh, of people who, who want some spiritual happiness. There's a tremendous uh, need in, in this country. People are starving for it. I mean, basically our culture is a, is a, is a it's a gentle, it's a good culture, it's a, it's a benevolent culture, but we don't have, uh, there's a certain spiritual life which is missing and has become more and more rare as time goes on. I mean, our, our, we have less spiritual life in this country than we had even 10 or 20 years ago. And people, are, people need that like they need food. Uh, people need to have a, a spiritual way of life. People hunger for it. Uh, nothing else can really make them happy. So, I, th I think it's really great. I mean, the, the lamas coming here, sharing things with us, sharing the knowledge with us, and then uh, people being so hungry. And there's a human need for a spiritual way of life. And that's, the combination is fantastic. I went on a nine-day fast and someone brought up the question of, well, once you become healthy, what are you going to do with it? And that was the first time that I ever was asked that question and and I think that uh, drew me to the path of Buddhism because Buddhi Buddhism gives me a way to lead an ethical way of life and it's very satisfying and in a way that no other path has shown me. I had studied uh, a little bit about Buddhism in college and uh, I didn't really know that much about it but I was studying psychology and I was also studying uh, kind of on my own. I was, I was a science major as well, and I was studying physics. And uh, I was attempting to live, you know, a spiritual, spiritually informed life. And, you know, looking actively in my college environment, uh, in Christian groups and other groups, uh, New Age groups. And um, then a couple years after I graduated, I, uh, I met up with some Tibetan Buddhist uh, lamas in Tibet, uh, actually in Nepal, they'd come from Tibet, and uh, what struck me was that they were they were really authentic um, in the sense that what they taught you could see clearly expressed in their their way of being, and um, and that really uh, inspired me to to learn more and to find out more, and uh, and the more I found out, the more I realized. That I actually had been a Buddhist for for most of my adult life. I just hadn't hadn't realized it. Uh, before I was a Buddhist, I literally explored everything that Western metaphysics had to offer. That ranged from <clears throat> from Rosicrucianism to Freemasonry, through Rudolf Steiner's Anthroposophy, through Theosophy, to the Arcane School 
Madame Blavatsky, what else have you? So I have, I was very deep into Western esotericism. And I found out <coughs> that the people, the membership of this organization are not up to their teachings. You know, there is a wide gap between what they preach and what they do. So that was the first disappointment. And second, I, start, I started reading Buddhist book. And then I found out that the thing that I couldn't explain in all of the above things, above things that I just mentioned, Buddhism gave me a key to explain their own mysteries. Well, ever since I was a child, I was always looking for some kind of a big answer to the, I would say, the, uh, the big question that we've been asking ourselves. Where am I? What am I doing here? Why am I here? And within Christianity, I've been looking for those answers. And uh, the answers that I say I received, I wasn't totally satisfied with it. And uh, when I was in high school, I think one of my uh, teachers, I think he was a social science teacher, I think. And he was talking about diff different religions. And then he happened to mention Buddhism then. And in what he said was, uh, I think briefly, he said Buddhism, the goal of Buddhists is to get rid of desire. And I thought it was a strange thing to say because I, just wanting to get rid of desire was desire itself. And just that thought got me into, uh, I better go and read about more, more about this. And I went to the library and I read a lot about different religions, mostly uh, Eastern religions. And then when I, the stuff that I read from Buddhism was more striking for me because it seemed to be more reasonable. Let's put it that way. If I have a choice between, quote unquote, escaping pain and taking it forever, which is what most people do in the world, they take pain. How long would it take for somebody to be fed up with, fed up with suffering? So what are your alternatives? Stay, take it, and suffer forever? Or hoping that someday we may never work, we, we, we may, that may never come, that it's going to work? Or decide that enough, I have to do something about it. So, I don't know. If you call the quote enough, I have to do something about it, and quote, escape, then it's very healthy to escape, I think. <laughs> and Buddhism, as it enters America, we have the opportunity to see that uh, American Buddhists are educated uh, in Buddhism. So I would, you know, for me, ideally, would be if a, a very uh, dedicated core of maybe 30 to 50 people could uh, learn the great teachings of Buddhism in a very thorough way, uh, could incorporate them in their own lives, which is much harder, uh, and in their own hearts, and then uh, begin to communicate that uh, to other people around the country. I would like to see that. Okay, let's do second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and good. That's the second one. And what is the third one for? So you can be always happy when mommy says something. Right? So let's do the third one. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's good. Now you can sit down.